In today's show, we whip around the NBA and look at injuries right across the league. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast, brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com. You can find me on Twitter as always, at RedRock underscore B-Ball, on TikTok at RedRock underscore B-Ball, and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by Ibotta. Ibotta gives you cash back on hundreds of grocery items from produce to personal care to pantry goods. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta by using the code LOCKED. When you register, go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. So we are here to talk about injuries across the NBA. 30 teams, again, I know that people, if injuries hit you hard in the fantasy playoffs, we love to complain, oh my God, it's the worst, it sucks. There's actually not that many injuries across the NBA. There's not as many as you think there are. If you think there's a lot, there's not that many. If your team's been lucky, congratulations. There are a few big names out, obviously, which impacts things. But overall, it's not a huge list outside of the bullshit on a couple of teams that we're going to talk about. So, warning. Let's get it on, Gilly. <laughs> All right, let's look at the old Washington Wizards. And the only guy on the injury report is old mate Taj Gibson, who left last game with a non-COVID illness. He's getting four minutes a night. Some nights he doesn't play. Obviously, we don't need to worry too much about old uh, Taj. Let's go to Utah, where I think more injuries will crop up with this team. They seem to be selectively tanking. The man on the street, Jordan Clarkson. J-O-R-D-A-N-C-L-A-R-K-S-O-N. He's out again on Monday with a finger issue. That's four straight games for Clarko. They've only got a two-game week. Clarkson's now only got a one-game week. Clarkson isn't... Look, again, all of this is really dependent. If you, you Two-game weeks are annoying. You can hold players on two-game weeks. Um, you can stash guys, obviously an injured reserve if you've got it. But if you are in desperate stakes and need game boosts, Jordan Clarks is not a good enough player that you have to hold through a one-game week. Like you move on from him now. I reckon he's still going to probably be there Friday or Saturday when they play again. Well, they play against Saturday, but he's still going to be there on Friday. So he's it, without injured spots, he's a pretty clear drop. The other guy is the Padawan, Colin Sexton, who's going to miss Monday. Then the ne- their next game is Saturday. And that'll be, again, past his one-week evaluation. We just don't know what's going to happen again, like Clarkson. Sexton's not good enough after three hamstring injuries to come in, be, play big minutes, and be considered this great option. Sure, if he's available on Friday, or if, so he's cleared and ready to go by Friday and they play Saturday, you add him in. But by no means is he a guy that we care about at this point. Obviously, that will impact Horton Tucker and Chris Dunn, and we, we're going to get a decision on Dunn's 10-day um, coming up soon. Let me have a look. Um, I... Yeah, probably Wednesday we're going to have to get a decision on Chris Dunn's second 10-day to see whether they end up signing him for the rest of the season. And that will give us more of an indication of guess where they are with Colin Sexton. The Toronto Raptors, well, they're pretty clean as well. It's just Delano Banton with a thumb sprain. And as I say this, I think Washington yeah, Washington just ruled Taj Gibson out of Tuesday's game. Again, that doesn't matter. Um, Toronto's just Delano Banton with a thumb injury. That doesn't matter to anybody. He's not part of the rotation He's not going to be on NBA roster moving forward, I wouldn't have thought. Cool. This is where the nonsense happens. We go to the San Antonio Spurs, and they have four games this week, and I would say that there is maybe two or three players that play all four games. It's going to be a complete disaster. The Let's just go through this team now. The horse, Calvin Johnson. Whose horse is that? He missed Sunday's game with foot soreness. Yeah. Didn't look like a foot to me. Looked closer to eight or nine inches. We will see where Keldon, um, if he plays, there is zero chance he plays four games. There is zero chance he plays both the Tuesday and the Wednesday game. No way. So that's maybe three games for Keldon. That's still probably usable, but it's it's going to be annoying. Um, Jeremy Sohan has a knee issue. Sohan, now. Sorry, a knee issue. Sohan has missed two of the last three games. He missed against Houston played 32 minutes against Denver, missed against OKC. 
Um, they have the Tuesday, Wednesday back to back. He probably sits Tuesday, to be honest, against Orlando. It's a losable game. Um, they, they're going to lose against Dallas anyway, so he'll play that one. Then they've got the Grizzlies and the Hawks. So he might play those two games. So maybe we get three games out of Sohan. You've got Trey Jones, who's dealing with an illness after missing years with a foot injury. Came back, played two games, rested, played a game, and was out again. He's going to miss more time as well. He's not playing all four games this week. Malachi Brandon. Now, this one was a legit injury. I saw it happen during the game. Or it happened during a game, not this other nonsense that doesn't happen during a game. So Branham dealing with a shoulder sprain. Um, I would there is I don't think there's any chance that he plays on Tuesday. And then there's Ken Birch, who does actually have a knee problem, who's had a knee problem for years, and he's out. But this doesn't change this well, this injury report is going to be different because Zach Collins is not going to play all these games. Devin Vassell is going to sit either Tuesday or Wednesday with his knee injury maintenance. Fair enough. Knee surgery, knee surgery, no problem that. Romeo Langford with his persistent groin issue, is probably going to sit one or two games this week. Doug McDermott is going to sit one or two games this week. And is that a lot of names? Yeah, it is, because this is going to be an annoying situation. We are going to have, like, I don't, do you trust Devontae Graham, who was DMP'd on Friday? Not really. But given the fact that Johnson, Sohan, Jones, Collins, Branham, Vassell, Langford are all going to miss at least one game this week, maybe two for some of them, Graham probably plays all four. Same with Cater Bates Diop. I just don't know what the minutes are going to be or when that's or how it's going to occur. The other guy that feels relatively safe in terms of minutes is Goldfinger Charlie Bassey. I think he'll play all four games and I think he'll start at least one, making him a very good ad for the week. And the other guy to watch, if Branham, Jones, Sohan, and Johnson are all out, is Blake Wesley. Yes, he shot eight percent yesterday. Eight. Physically, I didn't think that was possible. Obviously, I do because I understand numbers. But he was shocking. But he played 30 minutes. And there is an opportunity for some minutes for him. So just, you've got to be on the lookout for their injury report. Understand that you are not getting four games out of anybody, except maybe Charles Bassey and maybe Sandro Mamakalishvili. Bassey becomes a 12, Sandro is like a 16. And there's just going to be ups and downs and they are going to be streamable with no long-term security at all. Yeah, no long-term security at all. For the Kings, who gives a shit, mate? They're, no one's injured. That's like That's been the take for this team all year. They've, they've just been healthy all year. And I know Kings fans say, oh, but Demontis Sabonis actually broke his thumb, Josh, and he played through it. Yeah, he did. He did have a break in his thumb, and he did miss like one one game or two games, and Fox had a couple of missed games. But theoretically, or not theoretically, I am pretty sure they've had the fewest man games missed due to injury this season. Great for them. They've parlayed it into success. What more can you ask for? For fantasy, it's made them A, boring, and B, predictable, which is also pretty good to know that uh, we don't have uh, too much concern there. The Portland Trailblazers. Damian Lillard missed last game with a calf injury. They got smacked in that game. I said at the start of the season, one of my hot takes was Chauncey Billups was a terrible coach and he would get fired during the season. Half of that is right. He didn't get fired during the season, but he is not a good coach. The whole process in hiring him was terrible. He's shown me nothing to suggest he should be an NBA head coach. And I think Blazers fans are realizing that now. So shout out to them. Lillard missed last game with that calf problem, which he had a couple of times early on, maybe December. He had that calf issue. I think it's just precautionary. I don't think, I, what I would think is, ooh, it feels a little tight. And they went, nah, hey, no, no, don't play. We actually need you in all these other games and we'll just, we can't play you through this. So I don't think there's any worry there. When he plays, Reddish and Thibel and Sharp all lose their value, as does Simon. They, they lose quite a bit of value. Justice Winslow, the longest grade two ankle sprain in the world. Anthony, I know it's not, you can't really compare because it's not fair on people, but just to show you the wide range of diagnoses, uh, it's been two and a half months for Justice Winslow with a grade two sprain, and Anthony Simons is three weeks. Not grade twos might be the different things and healing, all that stuff is different, but that that's a wild difference. And Ibu Baji is Ibu Baji. I've got two players that I'm really rooting for to see court time this year, and I think I'm not going to get it with Baji. Baji is in, dealing with a knee injury. The other one is Colin Gillespie, who's been on a two two way for the Nuggets all season, hasn't played a game. Hopefully we get there. I love to see guys who've been on rosters at least get some game time. Ibu Baji is out with a knee injury. With Lillard out again, you get that boost for Simons, Reddish, Thibault, Sharp. But I don't think that this Lillard injury is anything significant or long-term, which is great. Today's episode, as I mentioned earlier, is brought to you by iBotta. Groceries, school shopping, getting a little something for yourself. Well, you know you're already going to do it. So why don't you go in and get some cash back on stuff? Watching your closet grow after purchasing all of the season's latest trends, like I do, why don't you also watch your cash back grow with each purchase with Ibotta? You can earn cash back on every shopping trip. Ibotta gives you cash back on hundreds of grocery items and produce to personal care to pantry goods. You either link your loyalty account or upload your receipt after you shop and you get your cash back. 
It's that easy. The average Ibotta user earns $120 a year in real cash back. That could cover the cost of an entire shopping trip or you could use the cash back to buy a flight you've been looking for, dinner at a restaurant, a game you're looking to go to, whatever it is, Ibotta gives you real cash back. Not points, cash. Other apps will give you points back that don't amount to much. With Ibotta, you get that real cash back so you can cash out to your bank account, PayPal, or gift cards. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta. They say Ibotta a lot in this ad. Ibotta by using the code LOCKED when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app when using the code LOCKED. They missed an opportunity to say Ibotta there. That's Ibotta, I-B-O-T-T-A in the Google Play or App Store and use the code LOCKED, Ibotta. Phoenix Suns, Landry Shamit. Ever since Aaron Gordon teabagged him, we've seen about two seconds of action from Landry Shamet, and that was Christmas Day. Remember Devin Booker got hurt? We go, all right, let's go. Landry Shamet getting an opportunity to start. He played like one game and then got and then hasn't played since with that foot sprain. So he's obviously window of opportunity is dead. Kevin Durant's out. We're looking at well, it was three weeks it was announced middle of last week, so we're two and a half weeks to go. That's going to be the end of most fantasy playoffs. I know it's Kevin Durant, but you can't really hold that, can you? It's frustrating. Can't really hold on to him through that. We played three games for the Suns and got hurt. Fingers crossed that uh, he's back and ready to go by the playoffs. But for our purposes, it uh, it doesn't matter. You move on. Josh Okogie, the replacement there. Then there'll be little streamers for Terrence Ross and Tory Craig. The Philadelphia 76ers. Joel Embiid looks to have gotten past some of the foot issues, which is great. Jalen McDaniels is questionable with a hip contusion. He's playing like 10 minutes a night anyway. And if he's out, it just goes to Shake Milton or it goes to Dan House or it goes to George Niang. And it doesn't really impact fantasy much at all. But he's currently questionable as not a Dr. Rivers told us that it's nothing serious. The next team. Um, they don't play until Tuesday. And I've seen a lot of people say, well, now, Josh, Franz is injured. Do I drop him? He's not even ruled out for a game yet. Franz Wagner hurt his ankle on Saturday. They played Tuesday. He's officially questionable. I don't know that he's going to play that game against the Spurs. He might not. But I think dropping a guy like Franz Wagner because you think he might get injured when they've got four games this week, and maybe he only plays three, but it doesn't appear like it's significantly serious if he's ruled out. If he's not even ruled out, it's questionable. So I don't think so. If he is out, Jalen Suggs becomes an ad. Cole Anthony gets a boost. The Bol Bol does not. They just don't, they don't like him anymore. He's done. And uh, yeah, so those are the other guys that get the boost there. Maybe they play Trimmer or KK a little bit, or Caleb Houston, who seems to have moved ahead of a KK in the rotation there. But, you know, relatively clean-looking injury report for the Magic. The Thunder, also a relatively clean-looking injury report. Shea Goodis Alexander missed the last game. That was the rest with his abdominal issue. But we're under no illusions here that he's going to sit any games this week. They play Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday. So we expect that he plays all of those games. The week after, there is a back-to-back at the Friday, Sunday. So that's the 24th and 26th. So we are 10 days away from their next back-to-back. Alexei Pokyshevsky still out with that fractured leg. No real indication of when he's coming back. I'd guess a week or so. Absolutely no chance that I'd be stashing him. He's A, going to play limited minutes when he comes back. And he's going to be battling there with Wiggins and even Usman Jeng, who's coming along. Not that he plays center. Robinson Earl, Pig Williams is no reason to have Poku on a roster. Um, I don't know where Poku fits on this team, honestly. I He showed a few flashes this season, but we remember how wildly, wildly inconsistent he was, or wildly inconsistent his playing time was. So yeah, we absolutely don't need to roster Alexei Pokashevsky. For the New York Knickerbockers, the burner Jalen Brunson is dealing with this foot soreness. Now, you know, I criticize Tom Thibodeau a lot for overworking players and playing them big minutes in games where they don't need to do that. I don't know that that's a cause of this. But it was really interesting that he missed the two games on Sunday and Tuesday against the Celtics and the Hornets, came back Thursday, played 19 minutes in the first half, and then sat the rest of that game and then missed the next two. But not to be too negative towards Tibbs, because I I love doing that, but not to be too negative here. They are not pushing him through this injury and they are giving him this time off with his foot injury. We hope it's nothing that's developed into something serious like a stress reaction or a hot spot or something like that or a foot tendon sprain. We haven't heard anything, but Brunson's going to miss Tuesday, meaning his next opportunity to play is Saturday. Now, the good news is that means he's probably okay to go by Saturday. That would mean that he's played one game in 15 days. So that's probably enough time for him to get better. What it means for fantasy is rough, though, because you don't get any games for him for six nights here to start this week. Now, Brunson is probably good enough if you are even a remotely capable fantasy team to hold on to. 
for one game because he is that good. But you might not be able to. You just might. Like, I know that, again, example 10 million of why IL sucks and IL plus is always the way to go. Because as of the time of me looking at this, which was maybe five hours ago, he was still listed as O and not I and J. And one league I'm in, which is I don't commission it, is listed with just IL and not IL plus. So, yeah, I can't do anything with that. I can't put him into the the injured slot. It's frustrating. I get that. I still think in a lot of spots, he is going to be worth holding, but like everything, and it's why when I talk about giving advice on this show, like it's all very context dependent. With him out, you would assume there's more for Quickly, but since he played that 55-minute game, I'd say Quickly's been a little bit disappointing. He's been okay, but he's been disappointing. You still have him, but is his two-game week actually good enough to use for the, for this week? I don't know that it is. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure that it's an absolute no-brainer. Same with Rowan Barrett, who was quite good last game and definitely steps up with Brunson out. And the same you could say a little bit for Quentin Grimes, but he sucked last game too. But these guys who might be on wires, quickly probably isn't, but Grimes or Barrett, they're not good enough for two games to be really worth anything for us. So, yeah, all in all, don't think there's much to do there. The New Orleans Pelicans, Brandon Ingram. Man, the bloke just cannot stay healthy at all. Miss both games across the weekend. They don't play until Tuesday. I, Given his healing powers of this season, I would expect a missed game Tuesday. And then they play a Friday-Sunday pair against the Rockets. And I reckon he might... There's a chance he misses one of those as well. It's really frustrating. Najee Marshall got the start, but it was Josh Richardson and Trey Murphy who really benefited. Murphy's a must-roster player. Richardson's borderline, especially if we know Ingram's out. And Marshall's okay to roster. I hope he's okay because I've got him in the final of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Bowl. Zion's probably a week and a half away still. Um, very hard to consider him a hold because when he comes back, I think he's going to be a limited minutes and they have a back-to-back on the 28th of March as well. So he's going to miss a game straight away there while Alvarado's out for another two to three weeks also. So we just keep rolling with Trey Murphy. We give that boost to Herb Jones who's getting assists now. We give the boost to Richardson. We give the boost to Marshall. And deeper leagues, we give the boost to Dyson Daniels. But Larry Nance is back for this team. The Minnesota Timberwolves. Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert. Gobert popped up on the injury report for today's game with an ankle issue. Obviously, if he's out, we're streaming in the Wizard of Nas, Nas Reed. Towns is out with a calf strain. Honestly, just no idea. It's, I don't think there's any way he comes back this week. Maybe we look at next Monday on limited minutes, but I would guess that if he is back, it's around like the 31st. There's a game where they have on the 31st of March against the Lakers. Maybe the 29th against the Suns. Maybe that's realistic. As long as he's out, Kyle Anderson's the guy that we roll with. And Towns is going to be pretty limited when he comes back. Austin Rivers is dealing with a back problem, but he's been overtaken by Nikhil Alexander-Walker in the rotation. And Jalen Noel has now missed seven straight games with knee tendonitis. I, I remember getting into arguments with people when the trade happened with D'Angelo Russell. People said that Jalen Noel was going to be a top 80 guy and he was going to take over from Mike Conley because they need his scoring burst. Um, yeah, he's not, I don't even think, in the rotation now anyway. And obviously, we don't need to hold on to him. People love a bucket getter. That's a great tip for buy lows, sell highs, is that when someone pops off and has like a 15-point game in 14 minutes, people love a bucket. Love it. Built different. Today's episode is brought to you by Fangio. Midway point of the NBA season is in our rearview mirror ad. Get updated because we're almost at the playoffs and that is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook because new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000 redos. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. And then you can bet on everything from the money line, game totals, points scored, player props, whatever it is that you're looking for. Let's look at games today. The Pacers without Halliburton, without Turner, without McConnell. Maybe without heel. They're three and a half point favorites against the Pistons because Detroit and Dwayne Casey. Well, Dwayne, I, I could say Dwayne Casey's trying to lose, but I'm not sure he knows how to win. So whatever, just do your job, Dwayne, and you'll get the get it done for Detroit. The Pacers are three and a half point favorites. You can check that out over at FanDuel. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. Don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel an official sports betting partner of the NBA. And don't forget to gamble responsibly. I remember someone saying that, oh, man, why does Josh hate the Pistons so much? Man, why does he hate him? And someone said, oh, he because he used to be a Bulls fan, so it just must be carried on uh, rivalry animosity. No, I just hate incompetence. So whatever, if they become competent, I love the Pistons. I love a lot of their players. 
I just think that they make poor decisions and poor coaching and poor general manager stuff. So I'll criticize it. Whatever the team is that makes bad decisions, I'll criticize it. Again, if I was a former Bulls fan and I hate the Pistons, why do I hate the Bulls? I just criticize poor management and poor decision making. The Milwaukee Bucks. Giannis and Tokatomatu. Thanks, Basil. Um, Giannis is dealing with a hand issue. I don't know how serious this is or what the hand issue actually is. Giannis has now missed three straight games and he's officially questionable for Monday. They've got a Monday, Tuesday back-to-back against the Kings and the Suns. So pretty decent opponents here. They, they, they just, they're rolling most of the time. Um, I don't think it's anything to be worried about, but who knows? Who knows? With him out, Punch Bob has been the guy benefiting and Bob Portis was getting like 18 minutes before that. So if we see Giannis back, I would hold Portis for at least one game. At least hold him for this back-to-back and then reassess to see whether Giannis is back. Jinglin Joe is out on Monday. He did play their last back-to-back Ingles. In fact, he played their last two back-to-backs, but he's resting on this one against the Kings. So he, he played an amazing game last time against the Warriors. With him out, we get a boost for Crowder. We get a boost for Carter. We get a boost for Grayson Allen and probably a little bit of a boost for maybe a, a Marjan Beauchamp. Not that that matters for most people. And then Wesley Matthews is dealing with a hammy. He hasn't played for weeks. Not, oh, Sorry, not a hammy. It's a calf. My bad. Wrote the wrong thing down. He's not someone we need to worry about. Maybe we get the debut of the Iron Shoulder, Goran Dragic. That's possible. The Miami Heat. Um, Caleb Martin is probable with a knee soreness issue. He's been playing 27 minutes or so a night, but he missed the game against the Magic. He's a streamable option, but that's about it. Kyle Lowry played 36 minutes in his first game back, then was listed questionable for knee soreness, but he is actually playing today. I don't know whether they're going to start him or not. He said, oh, no, I'm fine coming off the bench. Okay. Um, we'll see whether they do actually start him or they start Vincent or what the minutes are because they both played big minutes in that last game. Even if, I don't even know what I'm going on about Larry, but I'm just telling you this in. Uh, Duncan Robinson missed the last few games with COVID, but he's questionable. He's not going to play. While Cody Zeller is dealing with a nasal fracture, he is out. So that probably means, well, it won't be uh, Nikola Jovic that gets minutes. It won't be Orlando Robinson. It might be the big fella, Irma Yurtseven, who played seven minutes last game. Remember Yurtseven? Uh, he's back in pog form. The Memphis Grizzlies. Ja Morant is still out with personal leave. That extra four games that they told us about, there are two more of those, Monday and Friday. So theoretically, the earliest the Jar could return is Friday against the Spurs, and they've got the Warriors on Saturday. I I don't think he plays this week, but I, I just I don't know. I, I would be surprised if he plays in March. Again, pure speculation, nothing backing it up. We just roll with Tyus Jones until um, Jar is back. Stephen Adams is basically done for the regular season, so we just keep going with Xavier T. Illman. Just an update on Brandon Clark in case you haven't heard. He's out for the season with an Achilles tear. And Vince Williams is dealing with a shoulder issue and Jake LaRavia with a back. He's really disappointed with um, Jake LaRavia's season. I thought he could be a decent role player in the NBA, but he hasn't shown it so far. The Lakers, LeBron is still dealing with that foot issue. LeBron James. We are probably two weeks away from LeBron coming back. I would guess the 26th of March is a decent return guess. They told us three weeks re-evaluation. We are you know, about a week away from that, a little bit more than a week away from the re-evaluation. With him out, you get the extra boost for Reeves, for Schroeder, for Beasley, for Brown. But the only guy there who's really reliable is Reeves, and even then he's up and down. Reeves and Schroeder are 12-team-ish back-end guys. Beasley isn't. He's just a stream guy, and Brown is just a deeper league player. It doesn't change anything for Vanderbilt. It does help D'Angelo Russell quite a bit. Well, Mo Bumba, his regular season is over. So deeper leagues want to know that Winnie and Gabriel is their backup center now. The LA Clippers, Norman Powell, probably still a week or a week and a half away with that shoulder issue. That just means more minutes for guys like Terrence Mann, Eric Gordon, Eric Gordon in particular. It hasn't mean that Bones Highland has played because he just hasn't. It doesn't mean that Robert Covington plays. It doesn't mean anything. It just means those minutes that Powell was playing get distributed to Westbrook, Morris, Batum, Mann, Gordon, and all those guys, and none of them are really that interesting for fantasy. Well, BJ Boston, he's dealing with a tailbone injury. Indiana Pacers are a little bit annoying at the moment. Halliburton's out, Benedict Matherin's out, Miles Turner is out, and Timothy John McConnell are out on Monday against the Pistons. I think that they'll play Saturday, or sorry, Thursday against the Pacers. Try again. They are the Pacers. Thursday against the Bucks, Saturday against the Sixers. I think they'll all be fine outside of Matherin. I don't think he's going to play for a while. I think that was a pretty significant injury, and I reckon his regular season might be done, but they haven't announced that yet. So with Halliburton, Turner out, 
McConnell out. We're really going hard on Isaiah Jackson. My priority would be Isaiah Jackson, Jalen Smith, Chris Duarte, or Andrew Nembhard, Chris Duarte. That's the order I would go in terms of streaming Monday. But I expect at least Halliburton, Turner, and McConnell to play on Thursday. Probably not Matherin. But we get really good Jackson, Smith, Nembhard, Duarte value. Even Nwora become a stream option, become stream options for that Monday game. Buddy Heald's still questionable with that foot issue, whatever that foot issue is. For the Houston Rockets, there's only one bloke on the injury report. It's a delicate dance in just 17 steps. Shengun is dealing with groin soreness. He is probable for Monday's game. If he is out, I would fire... I would fire him up anyway, but I would fire the shit out of Jabari Smith Jr. I would fire up um, Tari Eason. I would fire up... Um, actually, I wouldn't fire up Ujman Garuba, but he will get more minutes. But I would think they start Smith at center and Eason at power forward and more minutes for Jay Sean Tate. But Shengun's going to play, so really, it's a moot point. The Golden State Warriors. I don't think we should have any expectation that Andrew Wiggins plays in March. I don't know when he's coming back. Steve Kerr said, yeah, we hope to get him back this year. That's just terrible news. It's obviously something really bad happening in his family, um, and we hope everything's okay, but it sounds like it isn't. So just don't have expe- expectations of him coming back. He's also, not. it sounds callous, but he's not good enough in fantasy for us to hold on and care about that from a fantasy point of view. Real life, obviously, we care about the person, and we hope everything's okay. But in terms of making a decision for our roster, well, we don't need to worry about that. Johnny Kaminga is dealing with an ankle problem. He's missed the last two games. There is an opportunity for him. Who, and he's putting up some okay numbers before that ankle, spl- uh, ankle, ankle sprain with Wiggins out. So he's worth looking at. DiVincenzo is obviously the big winner there as well. But Kaminga has maybe a place on a 12-team roster. Draymond is probable with an ankle sprain. Okay, Andre Iguodala with a hip issue. Why is this guy even playing? And Gary Payton still probably a few weeks away from returning from that abdominal issue. And he will get some minutes, but it's not going to be enough to matter for most fantasy leagues. Next to the Time for the next bullshit franchise, the Detroit Pistons and their injuries. Um... Jaden Ivey dealing with COVID protocols. He's out Monday. I expect that he's out Tuesday. Maybe he returns Thursday. He was starting to play really well. With him out, Killian Hayes gets the boost, and then you get the dregs like Corey Joseph and Scooter Magruder jumping up too. Marvin Bagley, we're going to rule him out for the ankle. I actually think, given Bagley's healing issues, that he's out for the season, but I don't know that. But he's out at least this week, so we drop him. Alec Burks' foot is sore, so he's out. He's missed the last three games, and he's going to miss his fourth straight Monday. Maybe he plays Tuesday. That'd be a great opportunity for Burks to put up some good numbers, but alas, he's getting pistoned. Alec Berg. Remember, this is a team that cops no criticism. Every, every criticism goes to the Thunder, but they blatantly just benched Jeremy Grant for like the last month of the last two seasons, basically. They do, and no one ever talks about it. Um, and they're going to do the same with Boyan Bogdanovic. I think his season is done with his bilateral Achilles soreness. I, they do this. Like, they go through the trade deadline. They don't trade their assets that they're not using, and then they just don't play them for the rest of the season. I don't know. What, what was the point of it? Just don't play them all year. Did Boyan Bogdanovic lead you to wins? Absolutely not. No one cares, though. He's out. Bogdanovic, I don't think he's playing again. Isaiah Stewart's regular season is over. Hamadou Diallo's regular season as if they're making the playoffs. Stewart's season is over. Diallo's season is over as well. They did sign um, Eugene Omarui to his second 10-day contract. And given that their front court, which had four centers before, now has only two. And if they're going to play Duran and Wiseman together, RIP your eyes watching that. I think they're going to have to. Obviously, Duran and Wiseman are ads. Isaiah Livers is the ad as well. But deeper leagues... The big fella, Omari, 23, 27, 26 minutes. He flashed in one of these games or two of these games with the Pistons. He also flashed a couple of times. Well, not Josh Primo style, but he flashed some talent with the Thunder back in the day as well. So there is some value there in taking a squiz at Omari in the shallower formats with the three games in four nights coming, coming up and with the expectation that there's no Bagley, no Bogdanovich, probably no Burks, and probably no Ivy as well. The Denver Nuggets, relatively relatively safe or relatively clean injury report. They did just add Reggie Jackson on there as probable with an oblique issue. Zeke Nagy's is dealing with a shoulder issue. Colin Gillespie, my man, get into a game, mate, yeah, with that right lower leg fracture. And there is also Jamal Murray on the injury report with the um, knee soreness again. Now, I'm just double-checking this. I probably should have checked this. Oh, yeah, so it's his left, left knee soreness, which is his ACL. Now, he had... The ACL surgery on his left knee, 
He missed a bunch of time around the All-Star break with right knee soreness, but this is back to his left knee. Now, he left the last game, left again. He uh, was removed from the last game with that knee soreness. I don't think it's anything serious against that was against the Nets. I don't think it's going to cost, cost him time, but there is a Saturday-Sunday back-to-back coming up for the headmaster. So I'd be a little concerned that he misses one game this week. A little concerned. The Dallas Mavericks, Kyrie Irving is back on the injury report with that foot problem that caused him to miss Saturday's game. Our expectation is he plays on Monday, but I don't know that. Well, Luka Doncic is um, out again with the thigh problem. Oh, stunning. Yeah. So Doncic missed on Tuesday. Um, He left Tuesday's game early. He missed Wednesday's game. Um, I'm looking at the wrong person. My bad. Doncic left Wednesday's game with a thigh strain, missed Saturday's game, and he's going to miss Monday's game. They play Wednesday against the Spurs. Don't think we see him there. And there you've got Friday, uh, one game for him this week. So that's a situation where one game, if you just look at the numbers, it's not worth having Luka Doncic for one game this week. Don't, I was going to say don't aggregate that. No one aggregates anything I say. Don't like, take that as a, a reason to drop Luka Doncic. But in a vacuum, if this was like your finals week and you could get five games in into his roster spot for versus his likely one, you might actually be worth it. But in most cases, it's not your finals week. We don't know that he's only playing one game. And I think it's Luka Doncic, you just hold. But that's a decision that it looks sounds crazy that do I drop Luka Doncic? But there are circumstances where, look, if we do hear that he's ruled out Wednesday, the problem is if he's ruled out Wednesday, by the time he gets ruled out, then you'll have just what, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, so that you'll have five days left and then you've got to take that roster spot, turn it into five games played to make up for him playing maybe on Friday. And it's doable. It's doable. But it could also mean that he, you could play him that one game on the Friday and use someone else's roster spot to get five more games in. So you could get five more games in by dropping a lesser player. Lesser players, two games, get Doncic's one and get five in somewhere else. All right, that's all a little bit confusing. But what all I'm saying is one game sounds bad. Likely one game for the week sounds bad. It might be droppable, but I reckon there are other ways you can go about it to maximize what you're getting that don't include dropping him. Phew, that was a mouthful. With Doncic out, you would think Christian Wood gets it, but he doesn't because he's been bad. Um, Josh Green gets a boost. Timmy Hardaway, he's on fire, but that's going to cool off at some point, probably today. For the Cleveland Cavaliers, Jarrett Allen dealing with an eye contusion. Sounds shithouse. He missed Sunday's game. Uh, they've got a Tuesday, Wednesday back-to-back. I don't think the back-to-back really impacts him. If he's ready to go, he's ready to go. They started Lamar Stevens, which makes him a deeper league guy. But even before the Jarrett Allen injury, Stevens had played 22, 16, 27, 25 minutes. They are pushing him up ahead of Dean Wadey Wade, ahead of the discman C.D. Arsman, and playing minutes equivalent to Isaac Okoro. Not that we care too much for 12s, but 16 teamers, Lamar Stevens is in the mix. And he gets really in the mix if Jarrett Allen is out. And then very deep leagues look at Robin Lopez. For the Chicago Bulls, Javante Green still with a knee injury. He's not playing this season. I feel really, really good in... I don't feel good. Wrong phrase. I feel confident in saying Javante Green won't play again this season. With him out, it just boosts the value of a Derek Jones, Andre Drummond, Patrick Williams, but not enough for us to care in most fantasy leagues. They don't play until Wednesday, either the Bulls. They've got three games in five nights to end the week, but they don't play till Wednesday. Another team with a injury report that's fake is the Charlotte Hornets. Cody Martin, there is no chance that Cody Martin is playing this season again, so rule him out. They have just ruled Mark Williams out. Oh, hi, Mark. They only have two games this week. Williams is out Tuesday. That is a gigantic jack. Get that garbage out of here! And it's why we loved adding Nick Richards as soon as Mark Williams hurt his thumb. There was three games in four nights coming up. You've already got two starts out of Big Dick Nick. You're going to get a third out of him on Tuesday. Then you can make the call to drop him because then he plays Friday and that's it. Um, I I do worry, and Hornets injury reporting is horrible. Again, they won't tell us about Cody Martin. I bet he doesn't play, and they just won't. They'll just keep listing him out every game for three months. And I think, I think there's a reasonable chance here that Williams is done. I I don't know that, but I think it's a thumb lig- th- thumb sprain, thumb dislocation. You get a thumb sprain. It's four weeks usually. He might be back earlier than that. They don't need to push through anything. I think that he's done. Kelly Oubre missed last game with back discomfort. Cool. He's probable for Tuesday. So we hold for Oubre on Tuesday, and then we can decide if we want to move on for Friday. Like him and Rogier, probably the only guys you consider with one game in six nights to end the week, one game in five nights to end the week. Yeah, I wouldn't bother with Haywood or PJ Washington or Dennis Smith. 
But again, it's all context. Are you going to win? Because if you are, then you hold. James Booknight, remember him? He's dealing with an ankle problem, and I don't really care at all. For the Brooklyn Nets, Ben Simmons, another guy that I do not think is going to play again this season, but we know nothing official on that. With Simmons out, well, we know what happens. It's We get a lot of Royce O'Neal, a lot more Finney Smith, a lot more Cam Johnson. Nerlens Noel might get a couple of minutes. He might not get any minutes. I just don't expect to see Simmons play this season. Obviously, you should have dropped him weeks ago. For the Boston Celtics, there is the Rock DJ, Robbie Williams. DJ. Dealing with that hamstring injury, um... I'm not expecting him back Monday or Wednesday. Maybe Portland, but then they've got a Friday, Saturday back for Portland on Friday. They've got a Friday, Saturday back to back, so he's not playing them. So it's one game this week for Rob Williams. Probably. Maybe not even. Is it a drop? Probably. Again, open IL slots, put him there. But the uncertainties of when he's playing, the one game this week, the following week they play three games. And the following week after that, they play three games, including a back-to-back. So even after that, he might play five games in the two weeks after this week. It's not worth it. I don't think it's worth it. I like Rob Williams as a player. I It's weird because I was I pushed back on Rob Williams a lot in the preseason. I said, you guys are all overrating him. And now I am in the middle again. And people are like telling me, Josh, you're overrating him. He's not that good. So I'm sort of somewhere in the middle. But now I'm like, hey, look, this injury... The schedule, do or die, part of the season, no no thanks. Peyton Pritchard's dealing with this heel pain. I think that might cost him the regular season as well. And then the last team we look at is the Atlanta Hawks, and they are pretty clean on the injury report. It's just Bogdan Bogdanovich, who's questionable with back tightness. He missed Saturday's game. With him out, there's more minutes for um, Jalen Johnson, for Adrian Griffin Jr., and more importantly, for DeAndre Hunter. That pushes Hunter into a 12-team zone. 31 minutes of DeAndre Hunter, we don't care. 38 minutes, we do. Now, Bogdanovich is only like a 24-minute-a-night player under Quinn Snyder. That's not enough to hold through injury. They play Monday and then not again till Friday. So maybe Bogdanovich plays on Monday, but maybe he doesn't. And then you've got nothing until a Friday-Sunday combination. And that's not worth holding to me. And he's not good enough to deal with the uncertainty. Move on, I think, in most cases. And that, guys... We'll do it for me today. Don't forget to follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. Give it a thumbs up on YouTube. I forgot what I was going to say, guys. We are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.